Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing about the kinetics of immobilized enzymes. The kinetics of immobilized enzymes. And how does primarily we'll be discussing about how does immobilization affects the kinetics today. And in later lectures we will be discussing more in depth or about the various effects that the, uh, the different immobilization parameters have on our enzymes. So uh, when we immobilize the enzyme, the immobilization process confers certain effects over the enzyme. It changes something on the part of the enzyme that is if we are binding if we are entrapping if we are entrapping our or encapsulating our enzyme uh, then we are providing a mass transfer barrier okay we are providing a mass transfer limitation And if we are using any of the methods which includes binding of the enzyme, then when we bind or introduce any sort of chemical bonding with our enzyme, the new chemical bonds formed with the enzyme, they stabilize the enzyme structure and in turn it affects the structure of the enzyme at, at, at and it induces contraction and relaxation of various bonds across the enzyme and this results into conformational changes. So the immobilization process affects the structure of the enzyme when bonds are involved. If bond if bonding oh I have written the reason first it should be it induces conformational changes or structural changes and we know that structure is everything for the enzyme Once the structure of enzyme is altered, uh, then its activity will be altered. And along with it, if it is being immobilized using uh, bonding methods in which chemical bonds are formed, weak or strong, then again mass transfer limitations are always there. There will be, we have studied in our mass transfer operations that there is a stationary film, a stagnant stationary film at the surface, at any surface there is always a stationary or stagnant layer in which the diffusion is only due to molecular diffusion and it is, it becomes very slow because the film is stationary. So mass transfer limitations are always there and if we are using chemical methods then the conformational changes or structural changes are also involved which affects the immobilized, immobilized enzymes. Okay. Now based on this knowledge the enzyme kinetics have been divided into three types. Immobilized enzyme kinetics have been defined into three types. Number one is intrinsic kinetics. By the way, the distribution of our substrate the distribution of our substrate in the bulk and in the stationary layer is something we call as the partition effect. 
So mass transfer limitations would also induce partitioning of the substrate and we can call it as partition effects. Okay. So now coming back to the types of kinetics. So intrinsic kinetics is the kinetics of immobilized enzyme. It is the kinetics of immobilized enzyme in absence of partition and mass transfer limitations. Kinetics in absence of partition and mass transfer limitations. So what is left is the conformation changes. So intrinsic kinetics depicts or represents the effect of the conformation changes on the enzyme kinetics because this intrinsic kinetics would not be same as the free enzyme kinetics. It will not be similar to it will not be similar to free enzyme kinetics. This is a point to be noted. Because you might think that when we are ignoring the partition effects oh, kinetics of kinetics without or we, what you have you must have written I have said what I had said uh, is not what I have written here so uh, it is kinetics ignoring the partition and mass transfer limitations so this intrinsic kinetics will not be similar to the free enzyme kinetics and it would represent only the conformational changes or the structural changes the kinetics, the effect on kinetics of the change in conformation of enzyme. The second type of kinetics is inherent kinetics. Inherent kinetics. It is the kinetics observed in absence of mass transfer limitations only. kinetics in which we include the partition effect and the conformation changes conformational changes and ignore mass transfer limitations, mass transfer resistance. Okay. So this is one more step ahead now. Here we can see what does partition does to our kinetics. And we will see in our future lectures that partition has a very great effect on the kinetics of enzymes and it also changes various optimum values of the free enzyme. For example, optimum temperature and pH values are altered by the partition effect. Now finally, the third type of kinetics that is defined uh, is what we are observing So it is also called as observed kinetics or people call it as effective or apparent kinetics apparent for us not for the enzyme okay
so it is effective from the standpoint of the enzyme user that is us because it is what uh, we get uh, but it is apparent from the standpoint of the enzyme because it does not reflect the actual catalytic potential of the enzyme but it is something that has been altered and uh, for the enzyme so it is apparent for the enzyme okay so we can easily now you can uh, write it down what is observed kinetics it is the kinetics that we determine by experimental methods okay so this is uh, the different types of uh, kinetics and uh, we have seen the effect of immobilization on the conformational and structural changes and it also uh, imparts mass transfer limitations and which in turn gives the partition effect and this induces the micro environmental effects that alters the enzyme activity which we will be dealing which now of, uh, from now on uh, in our lectures we will be dealing with mass transfer limitations and partition effects so in next lecture we will deal with partition effect thank you